Hey, what's up? Hope you're doing well. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing seven tips that I have for shadow line skirtings and door jams. So let's get started. So the first tip I have is to make sure your frame is well prepared for shadow lines. One of the difficult things about working with shadow lines is that they will accentuate any imperfections that you have in your frame. It's really important that your walls are straightened from top to bottom. Just like how they have to straighten all the way up to the top for square set uh, plaster ceilings, you need to straighten all the way to the bottom, otherwise you might have waviness in the skirting once it's installed. In the framing prep, it's also really important to install a noggin at skirting height so that you have something to fix the plaster onto. Normally you'd fix the plaster sort of onto the bottom plate at the bottom, but because the plaster will be set off the ground above the skirting, you need to add an extra noggin at that height. If you don't add that noggin, the plaster also runs the risk of being wavy. The second thing that you'll need to consider is the skirting profile and the method of installation. So a very common method of installation is to use a 13mm primed MDF skirting uh, with 10mm plasterboard, a 10mm gap in between the skirting and the plaster, and a P50 bead to finish off the plaster and create that shadow line. On this particular project, we used a rebated skirt uh, with plastic tear away L beads. However, this proved quite troublesome for us for a couple reasons. So number one, because we didn't install that extra noggin at the skirting and the plaster height, we developed some waviness in the plaster that was installed uh, in between the studs because there was nothing for the plaster to be fixed onto. Once you pair that with the flexibility and the malleability of the plastic bead, we did have some quality control issues which were quite difficult to overcome. So had we installed that extra noggin and used a metal L bead or a metal P50, I believe the finish would have been a lot straighter and we wouldn't have had any of those waving uh, problems. The third thing you need to consider is the door jam profile. Now, especially if you're going to be using heavy doors like semi-solid or solid doors, I certainly recommend that you use hardwood door jams. Uh, at the very least, use pine. Uh, but I think like a KD hardwood is preferable. Very important, the mistake that I made on this particular project is I went too thin with the door jam. The problem that this created is that the latch box for the door locks uh, were too wide and they protruded out into the shadow line. Now eventually we resolved this issue by using a P60 bead instead of a L bead, uh, but it could have been easily avoided had I used a thicker jam material. So I would recommend anything that's sort of 35 millimeters or thicker. I think 35 mil or 45 mil looks great. Now you also have to remember that the door jams have to be wider than the standard width. Standard width door jams allow for an architrave to be installed on top of it. However, you need to be flush with the plaster instead of being recessed in. And since you're going custom with door jams already, a really cool look that I've seen is to go wider on the door jam such that it protrudes out from the wall. So this creates this reveal type look around your door frames uh, and I think it's a really awesome look as well. The fourth thing you need to consider is flooring. So skirtings are usually installed on top of a finished floor after the floor is 100% complete and painted to be finished off. However, with shadow line skirtings, after the skirting is installed, extensive plastering work needs to still occur to finish off that shadow line. So this means that, let's say if you have a pre-finished timber floor, you need to protect that floor really well while doing the stopping uh, and the plastering work on that shadow line during that final process. The other problem is plasterers usually prefer installing the plaster sheets directly on top of the skirtings. Uh, this makes it a lot easier for them to set their heights uh, and they can just follow the skirting with their shadow line. However, if we follow the logic that the skirting needs to be installed after the finished floor and the plasterers want the plaster to be installed after the skirting, that means that we have to install the finished floor before we hang any plaster sheets. The common solution to this that I've seen is that plaster sheets are laser hung uh, at a set height and then uh, the floor is installed followed by the skirting sitting on top of that floor. So this isn't necessarily an issue with other floor finishes like carpet because that can be tucked underneath that skirting and you might ask why can't floorboards be tucked under that skirting in the same way? Well from speaking to a lot of other industry folk and flooring professionals uh, the message that I've received is that it's really difficult to tuck 
a timber floor underneath the skirting effectively. And we certainly don't want to install quads uh, as a trim piece on top of that floor. My fifth tip is to think beyond shadow line skirtings and jams when you're doing them. Because this is a relatively unconventional finish, it's going to affect the build in ways that you might not expect. For example, uh, one thing that I've seen a lot of people mess up, including myself, is the width of cavity slider cages. So cavity slider cages are usually designed for architraves to be installed on top of them. So generally they're not wide enough for a shadow line jam. Another example is if you're doing full height doors, you know, how are you going to finish that shadow line in conjunction with the ceiling? And because the actual stopping up uh, and the plastering of that shadow line is quite expensive, uh, you might need to really carefully plan exactly where you need skirting, shadow line skirtings and where you don't, such as behind joinery. My sixth tip and my most important tip is that collaboration is key. I found that this finish requires really closely linked collaboration between many different trades to minimize and mitigate any risk of things going wrong. Like with the timber flooring problem I was talking about before, there's this inherent conflict created between the carpenter, the finishing carpenter, the plasterer, and the flooring contractor. I believe that the way that yourself and these four trades interact and collaborate could make or break the finished product. So when you're planning on doing shadow line skirtings or door jams, Throw all your assumptions out the window and focus on collaborating. That's the most important thing. Now, the seventh tip. Okay, so this one's for the homeowners out there. How do I put this? I want you to ask yourselves, do you really need shadow lines? Yes, I know they're really cool uh, and I'm sure they'll fit in great with your vision and the look uh, of your home. But it can be a really expensive finish and I'm just wondering, could your money be spent better elsewhere? You know, I think that a finish like this shouldn't be at the top of anyone's priority list. I think there are many other things to consider uh, when planning and budgeting for uh, a build or a renovation. And I think there's nothing wrong with a really nice square skirt. I think a well-installed, well-painted, well-finished square skirt can look just as good almost just as good as shadow line skirting, but it can save you thousands of dollars. So I would really, really consider uh, rationally whether you need this finish or not. All right, so that wraps up my thoughts about shadow line skirtings. Don't leave yet, please. What I've tried to do with this video is to hop into it just a bit more quickly. I think my viewer retention has been really, really poor. I think people only watch like 8% of my videos. If you're watching this and you didn't just fast forward here, I wanna thank you for sticking around this long. Uh, it means a lot to me. And like always, I'm always around and happy to have a chat. So uh, leave a comment, send me a DM, uh, give me a call. My number's just on the page. All right, take care.